Throughout history, there's always been the bad guys. The ones you will see and hear about in this new show are the ones that are guilty of some of the world's worst crimes. Crimes against humanity, kidnapping, attempted kidnapping, murder, war crimes, and economic assassination to name a few. These criminals have never been prosecuted or even brought to trial. You have seen them in the political spotlight as well as in international business circles. They have shaped the world you see. They have fed off of and or created the tragedies that you've only read about, if not experienced. Their reason isn't about money. It's about power and control with no regards to human life. To them, their end justifies their means. These are the bad guys. Zygmunt Brzezinski was born in Warsaw, Poland in 1928. His family, members of nobility, bore the Trabicote arms and hailed from Galatia. Brzezinski's father was Stadius Brzezinski, a Polish diplomat who was posted to Germany from 1931 to 1935. After attending prep school in Montreal, Brzezinski entered McGill University in 1945 to obtain both his bachelor's and master's degrees. His master's thesis focused on the various nationalities within the Soviet Union. Brzezinski then went on to attend Harvard University to work on his Ph.D. focusing on the Soviet Union and the relations between the October Revolution, Vladimir Lenin's state, and the actions of Joseph Stalin. He received his doctorate in 1953 and became a United States citizen in 1958. In 1959, he moved to New York City to teach at Columbia University, where he wrote the Soviet Bloc, Unity and Conflict, he also became a member of the Council on Foreign Relations in New York and attended meetings at the Bilderberg Group. During the 1960 U.S. presidential elections, Brzezinski was the advisor to John F. Kennedy's campaign, and in 1964, Brzezinski supported Lyndon Johnson's presidential campaign. He also supported the Vietnam War, which led to the deaths of 58,148 Americans and over a million Vietnamese. From 1966 to 1968, he served as a member of the Policy Planning Council of the U.S. Department of State. For the 1968 U.S. presidential campaign, Brzezinski was chairman of the Herbert Humphrey Foreign Policy Task Force. In 1969, while at Columbia University, he wrote a book called Between Ages, America's Role in the Technotronic Era that was published in 1970. In his book, he predicted a more controlled and directed society would gradually appear, linked to technology. This society would be dominated by an elite group which impresses voters by allegedly superior scientific know-how. Unhindered by the restraints and traditional liberal values, this elite would not hesitate to achieve its political ends by using the latest modern techniques for influencing public behavior and keeping society under close surveillance and control. Technical and scientific momentum would then feed on the situation it exploits. Upon reading the book, David Rockefeller lured Brzezinski away from Columbia University to become a chairman and co-founder of the Trilateral Commission in 1973. Brzezinski selected Georgia Governor Jimmy Carter as a member. Jimmy Carter announced his candidacy for the 1976 presidential campaign to a skeptical media and proclaimed himself an eager student of Brzezinski. Brzezinski became Carter's principal foreign policy advisor by the late 1975. After his victory in 1976, Carter made Brzezinski National Security Advisor. In 1977, Brzezinski forms the Nationalities Working Group dedicated to the idea of weakening the Soviet Union by inflaming its ethnic tensions. The Islamic populations are regarded as prime targets. In December 1978, Brzezinski says, an arc of crisis stretches along the shores of the Indian Ocean, where fragile social and political structures in the region of vital importance to us threaten with fragmentation. The resulting political chaos could well be filled by elements hostile to our values and sympathetic to our adversaries. 
State Department official Henry Pretch will later recall that Brzezinski had the idea that Islamic forces could be used against the Soviet Union. In February 1979, after the Shah is disposed of in Iran, the Ayatollah Khomeini takes over as its new leader. The U.S. is interested in continuing the work with the Iranian government. At first, the U.S. is taken aback by the new fundamentalist Islamic government, and Brzezinski contemplates fomenting a military coup. But Khomeini is fiercely anti-communist, and Brzezinski soon decides that Iran's new government can become a part of an effective anti-Soviet alliance he calls the Ark of Crisis. Nine months later, on November 4, 1979, a group of Islamist students and militants took over the American embassy where 53 Americans were held hostage for 444 days until January 20, 1981, in support of the Iranian Revolution. In 1980, Brzezinski planned Operation Eagle Claw, what was meant to free the hostages in Iran using a newly created Delta Force. The mission was a failure and caused the deaths of eight American servicemen. On December 8, 1979, a little over a month after the Iranian hostage crisis began, the Soviet Union invades Afghanistan. The Russians were initially invited by the Afghan government to deal with the rising instability and army mutinies, and they started crossing the border on December 8. But on December 26, Russian troops stormed the presidential palace, killed the country's leader, believing that he had secret contacts with the U.S. Embassy and was probably a U.S. agent. Operation Cyclone was the code name for the United States Central Intelligence Agency's program to arm, train, and finance the Afghan Mujahideen during the Soviet War in Afghanistan from 1979 to 1989. Operation Cyclone was one of the longest and most expensive covert CIA operations ever undertaken. Funding began with 20 to 30 million dollars per year in 1980 and rose to 630 million per year in 1987. Mosques back again. Because your cause is right, and God is on your side. After the 1989 Soviet withdrawal from Afghanistan, the United States attempted to buy back Raytheon's Stinger missiles. With a $55 million program to buy back around 300 missiles, the U.S. government collected most of the Stingers it had delivered. But some had found their way into Iran, Korda, and North Korea. As for the insurgents and their leaders like Osama bin Laden, they became what we know today as Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. In a 180, in a January 1998 interview, Brzezinski admits that it was the U.S. policy to support radical Islamists to undermine Russia. He admits that the U.S. covert action drew Russia into starting the Afghan war in 1979. Asked if he has regrets about this, he responds, Regret what? That secret operation was an excellent idea. It had the effect of drawing the Russians into the Afghan trap, and you want me to regret it? The day that the Soviets officially crossed the border, I wrote to President Carter, we now have the opportunity of giving the USSR its Vietnam War. Then he is asked if he regrets having given arms and advice to the future terrorists, and he responds, what is most important to the history of the world, the Taliban or the collapse of the Soviet Empire? Some stirred up Muslims? or the liberation of Central Europe and the end of the Cold War. In the present, is Big New Brzezinski is the chairman for the Rand Corporation's Center for Middle Eastern Policy Advisory Board, counselor and trustee for the Center for Strategic and International Studies, as well as a counselor and trustee for the Center for a New American Security. He is also top advisor to Barack Obama. In conclusion, Brzezinski has used an indirect approach doctrine to commit his crimes and is guilty by his own admission or by the documentation contained of crimes against humanity, war crimes, conspiracy, breaching his oath of office, and the list goes on and on. Spignu Brzezinski worked his way into political power and influence through his family's legacy of nobility and wealth. His indirect doctrine has caused the deaths of an uncountable number of innocent people and that number continues to grow today. He openly admits he has no remorse for these actions. His disregard for life in pursuit of power and his ideology has earned him a seat at the table of the bad guys.